1911 is a battle-proven American icon with an extremely loyal fan base. And it's been said that carrying one requires you to change your lifestyle to fit the gun. So I wanted to give it a try. Two world wars. What's this chambered in? Nine millimeter. <laughs> you ever try shooting a man's gun? Sometimes you just gotta ask yourself, WWJMBD, what would John Moses Browning do? Double stack? You need more than nine rounds, you just ain't that good of a shooter. You know why I shoot a 45? They don't make a 46. Wait, what's that? 460 rolling? Is that real? Hey, baby! Get my new balances, we're going to the gun store! So I'm pretty new to 1911, so forgive me if my reenactment wasn't perfect, but as a member of the polymer generation, I wanted to know if a 100-year-old platform is still viable for daily carry. So like that smash button and subscribe, and we'll get right into it. Firstly, I want to thank Federal Ammunition for supplying all the ammo used in this video. We used Federal American Eagle 9mm, 115 grain, 230 grain 45 ACP, and 180 grain 10 millimeter. I also want to mention that none of these 1911s are mine. The Springfield Operator, the new Springfield Operator, was provided by Springfield Armory as well as the Prodigy right here, the 2011. Now the rest of these are provided by my friend Ryan, who works with us here at Gun Mag Warehouse. So thank you, Ryan, for letting me hold and play with your guns. Do that one again. That was freaking. Let's pause. All right. It's all right, you got it. And the rest of them were provided by my friend Ryan, who works with us here at Gun Mag Warehouse. So thank you to both of them. Now with all that out of the way, let's start with a brief brief history of the 1911. We'll go over some pros and cons and I'll save all my opinions for the very end. The 1911 was designed by John Moses Browning, who is largely considered one of the greatest firearms designers of all time. And it's been in service ever since 1911. It's older than sliced bread and was the first handgun to use a tilting barrel design, which essentially all modern handguns use today. It traditionally used a single stack magazine design and shot a 45 ACP round. And by the early 1990s, most 1911s have been replaced by the Beretta M9, but some are still in service by select units even to this day. Now, one of the pros to carrying a 1911 is its age. After 100 years of service, there are a ton of different options when it comes to size, caliber, capacity, and customization. Aftermarket support is extremely healthy with this type of firearm, and nearly every single manufacturer has made or continues to make a 1911-style firearm. It's also a very safe platform due to the internal and external safeties built in to the 1911. Most 1911s have a grip safety as well as a safety switch on the side, which is gonna reduce your chance of having a negligent discharge or having the gun be used against you. And Masada Ayub describes that much better than I can. A police department, I believe in Florida, was assessing the viability of going to a 1911-45 over their six-shot 38. So they took uh, volunteers from the non-sworn personnel in the department, uh, secretaries, motor pool, janitorial. Some of them knew guns, some of them didn't, but none were specifically trained with police weapons. They put them on the range, loaded their service revolver here, targets a couple of feet away, said, this is the copy of Disarm, this is the gun, when we say go, you pick it up and shoot them. Well, on the signal, bang, with a double action revolver. They averaged, if I recall correctly, 1.2 seconds. Cocked and locked, 1911 pistol. The average was approximately 18 seconds of messing with the gun before they finally figured out how to turn the damn thing on. Now that may be a little surprising to some, and maybe you want to disagree, that's fine. It's at least something to consider. 1911s are also heavier than their polymer counterparts, which means the mass of the gun is going to better help mitigate that recoil and reduce the amount of time it takes to provide follow-up shots to the target. And finally, 1911s are known to be extremely accurate due to their tight fitment of the parts, as well as a short 
trigger travel. And for that very reason, most competition shooters in the open class will be using a 2011 or a 1911 style platform. Um, the only difference between a 1911 and 2011, from what I know, is the double stack magazine capacity. Now the first con that I'm gonna talk about also happens to be a pro and that is the weight. A heavier gun can reduce recoil for some, but it can also be a burden for those who don't have a lot of grip strength or upper body strength. Plus, the extra weight may cause you a problem with conceal carry unless you have a rigid enough belt to actually keep that thing up and tight on you. Due to those tight tolerances, some 1911s are prone to having feeding issues. A little bit of debris getting in there can cause some problems for you. And I know that might not make sense to some of you because you're thinking, well, wasn't the 1911 chosen for its reliability? And that's absolutely the case. But the 1911s back then were made with looser tolerances. So if you pick up a 1911 and it rattles, it's probably pretty reliable. If it doesn't rattle, it's probably pretty accurate. And some 1911s and 2011s require a little bit of a break-in period where you might have to throw a couple hundred rounds through it before you get extreme consistency. Now the last con, and this is the biggest one for me, is the round capacity. Typically in a single stack magazine for a 1911, you're gonna get eight to 10 rounds. And in comparison to something like a Glock 19, which is a smaller size, you're starting off with 15. Now, obviously, if you jump up to a 2011 instead of a 1911, that problem kind of goes away, but we're talking about 1911s here, not 2011s. So here's my opinion. Should you carry a 1911? Yes, but only if you train with it. Although I personally prefer carrying a lighter weight gun with more capacity, there are not enough cons for me to sit here and definitively say you should not carry one. The FBI statistics state that most self-defense situations happen with six rounds, in seven to 10 yards, and that means a 1911 may have you covered. But I would carry an extra mag, just in case. Out of all the 1911s that I shot for this video, I can honestly say that my absolute favorite was the Springfield Operator, and I'll tell you exactly why. It's well within my price range, first and foremost, because in comparison, the Nighthawk Custom, I mean, you're waiting a minimum eight months for something like that at the, at the making of this video, for that sake. And shooting this, getting it all dirty, and making it look old, it just kind of hurts my soul. I, I don't want to shoot this for that very reason. Plus, if I ever had to use it in a self-defense situation, it kind of goes bye-bye for a while, and maybe forever. So, I uh, don't want to do that either. I'd like to hang on to this. But if I was going to carry anything on the table here, it's very likely going to be the Wilson Combat EDC X9, simply because I get the double stack magazine capacity and all the other benefits of the steel body. If you want a 1911 that's big, small, high capacity, low capacity, 9 millimeter, 45 ACP, 10 millimeter, there's one out there for you. And it makes me feel so glad to live in the time we do right now, the golden age of handguns. There is something out there that's going to work. If you made it this far, go ahead and like and subscribe. I appreciate it very, very much. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for shopping with Gun Mag Warehouse. Stay free.